I want to thank all y'all for coming out uh, today and, and spending your time here on a, a lovely weekend, uh, really day uh, with us. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Seth Tuman. I am an interventional radiologist here. And what I want to hope to talk about today is basically some of the new directions we are going here with interventional radiology, but uh, more importantly, some different workflows than you may be accustomed to with referring patients into us. Uh, traditional interventional procedures are based around diagnostic angiography as well as some of the other procedures you have may, uh, may have been uh, exposed to in residency and earlier training. Uh, the new procedures I want to go over briefly here are uh, wider indications for embolization procedures, a better quiver of armaments as far as, embol or as, far as ablations are concerned, and certain indications for thrombolysis, which is uh, dissolving blood clots. Oh, closer to the microphone. Okay. Um, embolization is where we take uh, particles or coils and block off blood flow. We've been doing this in trauma cases for years. Um, one of the new indications or advancements in this technique is for portal vein embolization. And it's something we do in conjunction with our surgical oncologists here. And basically, we block off the portal flow to one half of the liver. The other side of the liver that's still getting portal flow hypertrophies significantly in the, uh, the following four to six weeks, up to 20 milliliters a day. And basically, we're rendering patients that were not surgical candidates. We allow them to have the opportunity to have a surgical resection and a chance at a cure. This is something that obviously we coordinate here in-house. And you can see the, uh, the image there at the, after the coker maneuver in, in the OR. And you can see the side that we embolized is dark brown, and the other side is big, plump, and, and uh, healthy liver. Um, the other thing I want to talk about today, but really is not ready for prime time, is prostate artery embolization. This is analogous to uterine fibroid embolization in women. Um, certain investigators outside the country have gotten really great results with decreasing uh, lower urinary tract symptoms. However, the safety profile has not yet been ironed out yet. And, it's not something we're ready to offer on a wide scale yet. Hopefully next year I'll be uh, up here talking about uh, this is a service that we offer. Um, ablations, you know, the, the joke in interventional radiology is that there's tumors that are resistant to radiation. There are tumors that are resistant to chemotherapy. There are no tumors that are resistant to being cooked. And so uh, ablation is how we either put energy in or take energy out of a tumor and kill it. Um, radio frequency ablation is something that we've been doing for years. It's really good for tumors less than three and a half or four centimeters. Cryoablation is freezing tumors, and microwave ablation is basically putting energy in uh, so it's tuned to the moment of vibration of a water molecule, same as the microwave in your house. Uh, and IRE is a new, a new technique. These are all used for different areas. Um, the two that are important and really new to us uh, here is the microwave. It's good for lung t tumors, so you can basically deposit energy across an air gap uh, that's limited by some of the other uh, techniques that require a conduction of energy. Uh, and irreversible electroporation is uh, a new technique that we have to ablate tumors that are near the hilum of organs, mainly near the liver. So small lesions that would be a difficult, uh, a difficult surgery and involve killing bile ducts. We can kill the tumor but leave the extracellular matrix and the growth factor is bound to that, so you maintain patency of the duct. Uh, it's also good for pancreas, which has historically been difficult to treat. Thrombolysis uh, is another area that we're involved in growing our practice. Most of our thrombolysis work is on the venous side of things. This example is uh, in the hand, where the uh, emboli from AFib has uh, gone out and lodged and caused clinical symptoms. Basically, we inject and drip in thrombolytic enzymes that dissolve the clot. These enzymes work great on clot really less than two weeks old. Once you get further out than that, it becomes more difficult. Um, we do do this type of thrombolysis on patients with bad leg swelling from DVT or central venous occlusion. Um, again, call us. It's something that needs to be referred in and take a closer look. There's a, there's a lot of um, deeper information for thrombolysis. As far as opportunities go, the, the main take home here centers around the interventional radiology clinic, uh, but we also have increased capabilities in peripheral vascular disease and venous inf insufficiency that you may or may not be aware of. Our interventional clinic is staffed by this crack team of uh, interventional, radiology, interventional radiologists and uh, physician assistants. 
we're in the clinic five days a week and we've got a team on call 24-7. The, uh, the old way of referring to an interventional radiologist is to write an order and try and guess the right thing and get it done. We've really taken on a surgical model and want you to call us and ask a question or refer in and have the patient come in and see us in clinic. We'll evaluate and then order the necessary tests. It really takes the, the burden off the referring clinician. Um, so. For those of you who are in internal, you can refer in EPIC. Uh, for those of you who are external, just call us, and we have the Image Guided Procedures Group that will direct your referral to the appropriate uh, provider. Um, that's basically the summary slide of, you know, if you know what you want, if you're a subspecialist, you want this done, order it. If you have a question, refer it, or you can call us and speak to somebody directly. Uh, the number is up there that, you know, it's on your coffee mug. Take it with you and uh, keep it handy. Um, peripheral vascular disease, this is uh, the, the shocker picture after lunch, so this is, uh, <laughs> so a, a, a lot of what we do is limb salvage. Hopefully the patients you guys are seeing in your offices do not have critical limb ischemia, but maybe have limb claudication or uh, symptoms of fatigue and tiredness. These are the people that uh, we want to see before they get to this stage, so um, if somebody has, you know, one or two block claudication or difficulty climbing stairs, Send them to us, we can do the ABIs, we can do the Doppler studies, and we can uh, evaluate them with uh, non-invasive methods before going in and treating it if we need to. So this is a, a flush angiogram showing uh, left common femoral uh, stenosis with decreased flow on that side. One of the ways we fix this is we can dissect around the claudication or around the blockage and then re-enter. So we go subminimally outside of the lumen and then you pop back in. Um, you angioplasty it, that uh, number one there is a 10 centimeter uh, diameter balloon, and then we stented this to uh, open it up. And you can see the, the movie there shows good flow distally. Um, we talked about the arterial system. There's also this whole other venous system. The blood goes down. It's gotta, it's gotta get back somehow. Um, venous insufficiency and varicose veins are really caused by incompetent veins. The blood flows through the veins, and then as it sinks back down, the leaflets approximate and prevent the blood from going down. If you have incompetent valves, the blood sits on the valve and flows back, and then you get varicose veins that develop um, below the vein. Uh, in cases of DVT, a lot of times you'll have uh, thrombus gum up one of the valve leaflets and cause uh, post-thrombotic syndrome, which is varicose veins uh, after DVT. So again, another gross picture. So this is a venous stasis ulcer. It's typically on the medial aspect of the, uh, of the ankle right there. And this is, again, the end stage. You know, you don't, want, you don't want to have somebody come in your office with this. So one of the most common symptoms of venous stasis is pain and fatigue. And so, you know, be thinking of this if you do have patients that have uh, pain and fatigue. Also varicose veins. And then you get the lipodermal sclerosis, which is the skin thickening and the discoloration and the advanced disease. So one of the things that we can do is go in and identify these varicose segments and ablate them. So you access the segment with, a, uh, with an ultrasound and a needle. You put a wire up and a vascular sheath, and then you can ablate them. So there's really two technologies for ablating the uh, varicose veins. There's with a laser, which we have here, as well as radiofrequency ablation. Um, same concept, you're destroying the endothelial lining of the vein. The vein really, it's kind of amazing, shrinks up right as you're doing it, and then you're left with uh, an atretic segment over time. These patients do really well. It's a high technical success rate um, immediately post-procedure and at um, two years out. There's a you know, 95, 97 percent, depending on who you read. Uh, less morbidity and mortality than having a vein stripping in the OR. And, um, you know, the, the, the downside is patients do have to wear a compression hose for uh, several months after this. Um, again, this is a, a good cosmetic result. Hopefully, the majority of your patients don't have this bad of venous disease, but you can get a good result. Uh, spider veins, uh, this is most common in uh, women and patients that are on their feet a lot. Uh, it's mainly cosmetic, and these respond well to sclerotherapy. So sclerotherapy is just you take a very small gauge needle and cannulate the vein and ingest, inject it with uh, STS foam, which is basically dishwasher detergent, so foamy soap that irritates the lining of the vein and causes it to uh, scar down. So um, when I asked my wife to take a picture of her leg on Valentine's Day, she said, you better sclerose this for me if I'm going to let you show this picture. 
So that's, uh, that's on, the, on the docket for next week. Um, in summer, we, we're, we've, we've got some techniques that we're expanding to new indications, um, you know, more embolization, more, uh, more ablations and thrombolysis. And the opportunities are really in how you get patients to us. So um, if you have a question, again, refer it or call the number, uh, and we'd be happy to, to see your patients and uh, take care of their problems. And that's it.